Welcome back, fuckers. All right, in today's video, we're going to be running through the AGM 84H and E, the SLAM and the SLAM ER in the F-18 Hornet. We're going to do some uh, some strikes on some targets. But before we get into it, we're going to go into the mission editor, and we're going to run through how you guys can make a mission, because uh, a lot of people don't know how to use a mission editor and want to know, ask me all the time, um, can I share the mission? How do I make stuff? So we're going to run through it now, how I would set this up with this tutorial. So we're going to go into the mission editor. doesn't matter what map you use. Okay, we're just default on Syria here. And we're going to put in our, first of all, we'll put our target. So we're going to be doing two strikes. So we're going to change this to Russia. Um, just put an aircraft there. We're going to scroll down to the type. We're going to make it a transport. And we'll make it one of these. All right, you can see what it looks like if you hit on the little uh, weapons payload page. It gives you a little 3D video, uh, image of the aircraft. All right, you can cycle through. For some reason it's got the Kristen Eagle. So we're gonna go with that. And we're gonna make it here. All right, and we're just gonna go take off from ramp. And we're gonna make it uncontrolled so it doesn't move. Okay, you could also put a static object in, which we'll do for another one. So that's target one, and then target number two, we'll put up over, let's make it just a, like a bunker or something. So we'll put it over here. Let's go to static objects, a little bridge, little looking icon here. Uh, we don't want a cow, we want, let's get a structure, warehouse maybe. this look like Can you give us a preview there we go ammo depot tank one with we'll that okay we're going to hit this thing right there let's put this on satellite let's uh square him up we'll put it right there so we're going to hit this building okay that's going to be our second target for today all right so we've got two targets now we're going to put in our f-18 so we're going to change the, the country to USA, the task, we're going to put nothing, and we're going to scroll down and select F18, and we're going to pick client or player, either a client or player. I always go client because I play multiplayer most of the time. Client works the exact same as player, except player you can't use in multiplayer, so I just pick client. Um, we're going to set our altitude for 30,000 feet and our speed will be 0 0.8 max starting. We're also going to select our loadout. So let's go with, do we have any slams? I don't think we do. Nope, we do not. That's all right. So for this loadout, let's change our skin. So you can choose your skin as well that you want. So we're going to run with on... Station number eight. We're going to go with a. Where are we? Air to ground missile. Go with a slam ER. And on station two, we'll go with a slam. We're going to put two fuel tanks on board. And then on our center line, we're going to put the dartling pots. We need a dartling pod here. The AWW13 data link pod. All right. And this is going to be our air start aircraft. Okay. So that's what you're going to need. So on the actual F 18 Hornet, you can put uh, slams or slam ERs on stations two, three, seven, and eight. And you can also put a data link pod on stations two, three, five, seven, and eight. So you've got a bit of flexibility, but you need a data link pod to talk to the slams. So if you don't have a data link pod, your slams are going to be pretty much useless and not going to let you do anything with it. Okay, so make sure um, when you put your aircraft in or you load it up, make sure you've put a data link pod, the AWW-13 data link pod on your aircraft somewhere because you need that to synchronize to your aircraft. So that's that. So we've got our friendly little Hornet there. We're going to go back to the waypoint here. We're going to go add, and we're going to add a couple of waypoints in. So the first one, we're just going to do a target of opportunity strike. So I'm going to whack this here. Uh, we're going to switch it to edit. I'm going to drag the 
right onto the, the target there. And we're just going to press zero for altitude and it's going to default it to ground. So now we've got that waypoint one is slewed down to 16 feet. So if you're going to use a, a target or a waypoint as a target point to strike something on the ground, make sure you change the altitude in the mission editor. If you're setting this stuff up in the mission editor, make sure you make the altitude, just press zero and it will default to the ground altitude. Okay, and then that way your uh, precision munitions will have the, the correct altitude for the strike. So that's our first waypoint. And then our second one, we're gonna head over here. So we're gonna go add, and we're going to put a waypoint just up. Let's go like maybe there. All right, so just to the west of our target area. And let's just quickly move that straight north-ish. There we go, done. Uh, and we'll just make the altitude of this one, we'll make it back to 30,000 feet because we're just gonna use this as a steer point now. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're just going to pretty much remember this spot on the ground. We're going to use a, uh... all right, so it's right in between that little, that little uh, wedge right there. All right, so we're just going to remember that because we're going to use our scratch pad. We'll just write the forwards down now. Stuff it. Let's go. Uh, left Alt L. No, Left Alt Yankee, my bad. All right, so we want this one here, decimal seconds. All right, so we're going to zoom right in, and we're going to get back in here. We're just going to copy that stuff right there. So north, three five, three eight, three four point three three, and then east, uh, three four. Three two five zero point eight one, and the elevation is twenty nine feet. Done. Okay, so now we've got our our information we need. So you need the lat long decimal. Okay, for the uh, the pre-planned for the slam and the slam ER. All right, and I'll go through it again when we actually get in the jet and we actually fly and take these targets out or run through how to put in all the coordinates and stuff like that. But just for setting up the mission, um, if you want to use a pre-planned strike, you need to write the coordinates down. And then ideally, if you're setting up a mission, you'd come over to the little create mission briefing on the left here and just in the tasking, just punch it in. Okay, so then uh, that will show up in the mission briefing page and you have the coordinate there. Okay, so we can just say target zero one, done. All right, then we're gonna hit file, we'll press save, and we'll just call this uh, slam test. Okay, done. So that is it, we are set up. We've got an air start Hornet, we've got a waypoint, we've got two waypoints, and we've got our two targets that we're gonna take out with our two slams. So that's how you set up a quick and easy just practice mission, right? You can obviously put as many targets down as you want to practice and do all the stuff that you need to do. Just remember, guys, when you are using a waypoint as a target point or a strike, make sure you change the altitude of the waypoint to the ground level where the target is. Otherwise, you'll have uh, issues with your bombs not going where they're supposed to go. All right, guys, so I will see you in the jet in the air and we'll do a quick run through on how to set up all this stuff and do a strike with the uh, the slam and the slam ers right i'll see you guys in the aircraft in a second all righty guys we are in the aircraft we have hot started the jet just like we uh set up in the mission and we're flying towards our waypoint so we're going to quickly run through key binds first and foremost so let's uh quickly run through those right now so in the adjust controls you want to confirm you are in the f18c sim okay there's f18c game you want to be in the sim first one to launch the weapon 
you need the weapon release button. So make sure you've got that bound to something. Weapon release is for all air to ground munitions and your gun trigger second detent is for the gun and all air to air missiles, okay? So you need that. You're also going to need a sensor control switch right, left, aft, or forward. Okay, you'll need those bound to select uh, your MFD to make it your center of interest so you can control the, the slam or the slam ER. You will also need throttle designated controller to press. Okay, so that is the button you'll press if you know how to use the air-to-air -air radar. It's the button you use to lock up a target. Okay, or if you're using the uh, targeting pod, it's the button you press to designate a spot on the ground. Okay, it's the same button. Throttle designated controller to press, and you also need throttle designated controller to down, left, right, and up. Okay, either have those bound, or if you've got a little mini joystick on your HOTAS, you can also bind the throttle designated controller horizontal and vertical axis to your little mini joystick on your HOTAS. So you can see there, I've got it bound up. Good to go. So you need all those. And that is pretty much all you're going to need. If there's anything else, I will uh, bring up the controls menu and show you if I've forgotten anything, but I'm pretty sure that's it. All right, so that is that done. So we're going to turn master air to ground mode on. We're going to select, we're going to do a, let's go for the slam first. So we're going to select slam and we're going to be doing a target of opportunity attack. So we're going to select mode TOO and we're going to set up so our flight characteristics is the same as the harpoon so remember uh you've got just freeze my track ir all right so you've got uh, high medium and low high is thirty-five thousand feet is what the missile will cruise at low is five thousand and medium is fifteen thousand feet so we're gonna leave it on medium here e-fuse you can only set to instant that is all so we're gonna leave it on instant fusing make sure you set the fuse otherwise it will not detonate when it hits the target and then our distance, this is the distance until you get the seeker head to come on. So defaults at 10, we're going to bump that up to uh, 15 nautical miles in a second. Last thing, we need to hit the data link, okay, hit the data link box, and we need to synchronize our data link pod to our slam. So we're going to hit weapon, bottom left, and then we've got some options here. So these OSBs, okay, the buttons, one two three four this is in relation to your inboard and outboard pylon so starting at the top left button this will be station number two you can see we've got a slam fitted to station number two it says slam there if we had a slam fitted to our inboard pylon where the fuel tank is it would also say slam here and that would be for station number three if we had a slam or a slam er fitted to our fuel tank on the out sorry inboard right hand it would say slam or slam ER on station number seven, which is the third. And then the last one is station number eight, which as you can confirm we've got a slam ER fitted. So we're going to make sure we get slam station two, press that, and then we're gonna get slam underneath the data link. All right, and last thing we're gonna do before we get carried away, we're gonna to go to the slam display here on the right hand side. We're gonna hit that. We're gonna say release type is gonna be manual and we are also I'm going to unpause the track IR on the right hand side it's got UFC here I'm going to hit UFC distance and we're going to change that to 15 so that's our nautical miles that the seeker is going to turn on to get back to your main stores page just hit menu stores again and then that way you won't disrupt your alignment quality okay so now we can confirm we've got flight is in medium if you use instant distance to seeker enable is 15 nautical miles. All right, on our other DDI, if you hit the TAC, TAC page, say at the bottom middle button, you've got support and TAC. On the TAC page, on the top now, it will say DL13 display, and hit that, and this is gonna bring up your data link feed from the missile seeker head when it turns on. So at the moment, you can't see anything, it's all scrubbed out because the seeker is turned off. What we're looking for is this one right here. So CH002 stands for channel O channel number two and the channel number two is the exact same number as station number two which is our left hand output so we want to confirm that we've got station two channel two okay make sure that is a thing last one is your aft antenna so when you've fired your uh your slam or your slam ER, if you're flying in a different direction, because generally you're gonna fire it and then just loiter off the uh, 
out of the range of the let's just slow down here how far away are we 42 k's away i'm just going to put ourselves in a uh, a little bit of a bank turn it's because we are getting pretty close to the target so just while we're talking here um <clears throat> so channel sorry the uh, the aft antenna if the picture quality isn't looking the greatest, you can press aft antenna, and if your aircraft is facing away from where the missile is, it will clear up the picture. Okay, and I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so that is almost ready to go. All right, and all we need to do now is get ourselves ready to fire the missile, and to do this in target of opportunity mode, all right, you need a either a waypoint designation or a targeting point designation to do this. Okay, so you can use your targeting pod. You can uh, use a, a waypoint that you've punched in. Okay, a mark point you can use. Any of those things you can use as a a, uh, a waypoint designation. So we're going to select waypoint one down here on our HSI. Weapon designate, or waypoint designate. And you can see now on our HSO we've got a range. So if I just bump the scale out here. Okay, you can see we are we're just straightening our aircraft up right now. We're flying away from the target and we are well within the launch range. So that circle there represents our maximum range to fire the slam. At the moment we are 43 nautical miles. I believe it's about 60 nautical mile for the... Uh, the slam is about the max range, but again, the range will be dependent on your aircraft speed and altitude. Obviously, the faster and higher you are, the more reach you're going to have because you're going to be able to launch the missile from a, uh, a further distance. All right, so we're just going to spin around now and we're going to fire this bad boy. So we're good to go. Everything's ready to fire and we're going to steer it in when it gets closer to target. So what we're looking for here on our, just get ourselves in autopilot. So on our stores page here, we've got our in range is flashing. It's flashing because we're not actually in launch parameters. We're facing away. The missile can't do a full 180. So as soon as we get close enough, that in range is going to stop flashing. We're, there it is. Uh, now we can technically fire, but we're gonna just wait till we're nose on to the target. If it wasn't in range, if we were outside of that circle, it would have a, uh, a countdown timer and then TMR for time to max range. The second button or second number underneath there, 267 counting down with TTS. That is our time till seeker turns on. Okay, so the time it'll take until our missile enables through the data link pod and we'll get an image on our MFD of our seeker head. All right, so we're good to fire. We are all good to go, master arms on, air to ground mode, master mode is selected, slam is sequenced or uh, linked to our data link pod correctly, channel 02, station 02, and we've got our waypoint designation ready to go. So we're going to hit weapon release, and the brevity call is bruiser, so 20k bruiser, boom, weapon away. And we're just going to put ourselves in a little bit of Cruise ourselves out here. Trim ourselves out. They're heavy old missiles, so always trim your aircraft back. So I'm just hitting left wing down trim to combat the loss of the weapon. All right, and we're just going to go into a little bit of a bank here. So just slow down and touch. I'll put throttle hold on. Yeah. All right. So our missile is away. It's doing its thing, cruising in, and it's going to fly into that target area. So when we get within 15 nautical miles, we're going to get a picture on our data link pod or our data link display, and it will have the image of what the slam sees through the seeker head right there. Okay, so it's just going to cruise in. 
There we are over there. Marking like a mofo. And our missile's doing its thing. So we can see now we've got time till seeker enable is 85 seconds, pretty much. So I'll see you guys when it gets a little bit closer. I'll save you guys the boredom of watching me fly around in a circle. Alright guys, so we're at 10 seconds to enable. Target is currently off to our 5 o'clock. And we're coming around in a left hand bank turn. 2, 1, and we should get an image. So if we hit aft antenna, you can see the difference there. Okay, as we turn around, more nose towards the target. We can switch from aft to there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit our sensor control switch right. Make our data link display our soy and then all i do is press tdc depress i press and hold tdc depress and i can sweeten up i can steer the the, uh, the missile now as we go through so we go field of view increase so you can see it's pretty much looking straight at but we'll uh, we'll tighten it up as we get closer All right, so if I press and hold TDC to press, now I'm using TDC slew, you can see that I'm moving the crosshair and the missile will fly to the new designated spot. So in she goes, cruising in. You can see here our missile is flying in over the top of the target. It's gonna begin its dive in a second. Yeah. Down she goes. And we can just sweeten it up as we need so it hits center mass and we're obviously going to lose the uh, the image feed as soon as the missile impacts because it's going to destroy itself when it explodes here she goes bang shack and if we go back to our view. See, we have hit that guy. He ain't happy. That is that thing is not flying anytime soon. So there we go. Boom. Aircraft destroyed. Alrighty guys, we are gonna run through now how to do a slam ER pre-planned attack. So I uh, just had a phone call just before, so I had to uh, restart the mission. Had to redo it. So we've uh, removed our SAM. It, uh, sorry, the SLAM is gone. We've still got our SLAM ER, which is a little bit further back. Had to restart the mission just because I had a phone call. And uh, yeah, shit happens. Anyways, let's continue on. So we are going to run through setting up our SLAM ER now. So we're going to get, make sure that we have box SLAM R and it says ready. Okay, your alignment quality is good. Make sure you got data link. 13 deal 13 boxed as well and we're going to set up our parameters for the weapon now so mode is going to be pre-planned this time flight we're going to leave at medium e is going to be instant and then our distance will change to 15 nautical miles in a little bit so we're going to hit weapon now okay and we're going to link our slam on station number eight okay so remember on the osbs the push buttons on the left here so this is station two Station 3, Station 7, Station 8. So we want Station 8. We're going to hit that, and then we've got Data Link 13 is now has Slam R written underneath it. We're going to confirm that in a second. So we're going to hit Slam R Display. Type of release is going to be Manual. And then on our UFC, we're going to change our distance to 15 nautical mile. Enter. Done and done and that is that if we go over to our other mfd go to the attack page so support attack dl13 you can see it says channel 8 which is station 8 so we're all linked up there all right so now we're going to bring up our knee board our scratch pad with the coordinates that we got out of the mission editor that i went through just before and we're going to punch them in so we are on the uh, just again go through this so on the 
stores page, mode pre-plan, you're gonna come over to the right hand side, you're gonna select slam R or slam display. Okay, this is the exact same way you'd set up a pre-plan strike for both missiles. You hit that and then over on the right, left hand side, underneath mode PP, it says MSN. You hit that and this is where we're gonna punch in our target information. So we are gonna be putting it into pre-plan one Okay, that is boxed. It's X'd out at the moment because we don't have any valid coordinates for the missile. It doesn't know where it's going, so it's X'd out. It doesn't, it's not gonna work. So now we're gonna come over and we're gonna hit on the right-hand side, target UFC. And we're gonna punch in these coordinates. So we're gonna hit position. Latitude is our northing, so number two for north. And then we want three, five, three, eight, three, four. Press enter and then to get the decimals you just press 33 three. enter that's taken the entry then we're gonna hit longitude number six for east and then we want three four three two and five zero let's put ourselves in a bit of a bank term we're getting a little bit close here five zero press enter and then we want eight one enter now to get back to the elevation, you just come back over to the target UFC, unbox it, rebox it, select elevation. We want feet and 29 feet. Okay, so make sure you put elevation in for this, otherwise it will not work. Okay, your missile will crash in the ground early <coughs> and you don't want that. So we can confirm now. Here we have our coordinates, so north 3538.34 decimal 33. East 3432.50.81, elevation 29 feet. So our code or our coordinates are punched in. Happy days. Let's go back to the stores page. One last thing we're going to put in is we're going to put in a steer point. We want steer point number two. So remember in the mission editor, we uh, put in a second waypoint. Okay. Waypoint one in the mission editor was our first target, and waypoint two we used as a mark point or a steer point. That for the weapon that we're going to do now so on the slam er you're going to hit this button here stp so we'll have stp on the slam but when you press it it doesn't do anything okay on the slam er you press it and then on our hud ufc sorry it says stp1 we're going to hit that we want to assign a waypoint to the steer point okay but you could also put in you could punch in the position manually and the altitude that you want all right but we're just going to use a waypoint waypoint and it is number two that is what the waypoint is the number of the waypoint you can press enter and that is done okay our weapon is ready to fire so we are currently 70 nautical mile away from the target and you can see the range of our slam ear expanded response is a lot bigger than the slam so we've got a lot bigger standoff distance with the slam so we're just going to swing around swing around now and uh, we'll fire this, this slam ER. All right, and so another thing to remember is the slam and the slam ER do not have terrain following capabilities. So if there is mountains in between where you've fired the missile and the target, okay, you might want to consider trying to get it a clear run, okay, where it doesn't have to cross over a mountain range or a, uh, a decent sized hill, because otherwise it's gonna crash into the side of the mountain before it gets to the target. So keep that in mind. Have a look at the terrain on the map. If it looks like there's any uh, decent elevation, that could be a line of sight blocker for the missile. Okay, you can use a steer point to make it fly around said, said uh, obstruction. Okay, so we are in range now. We're going to fire the weapon. Let's uh, get ourselves a nice little picture. 200k bruiser. Weapon away. There we go. Missile is cruising off. Alright, so you can see it looks a lot different compared to the slam. The slam just looks like a harpoon. This has got a set of wings on it is why it can glide and travel further like a little mini airplane it's got a better seeker header you can see on the front there and it's just going to do its thing flying in to target so we're just going to re-trim our aircraft now because it's now going to be left wing heavy because we trimmed 
to counterbalance the loss of the slam before. Right, there we go. And we're just going to put ourselves in a lazy right hand bank. All right, so on our display now, you can see we've got a couple of different things compared to the uh, the slam. We've got this number here counting down. So this is the distance in nautical miles. The missile is away from the target, okay, from the target coordinate that you gave it. Um, we've also got track white hot, black hot. Okay, you can change between that. We've still got the aft antenna, and that is pretty much the only difference there. So we're going to while it's still cruising in, we're going to assign our presenter control switch right to get the diamond on our data link display. So we can use our TDC to steer it in a little bit. All right, so you can see we've got 240 odd seconds before it hits the time to uh, seek or enable. If we go to the F10 map there, you see the missile will cruise in towards our waypoint somewhere. So I actually did in the, uh, the mission editor, if you have a look closely here, if we go to uh, you can kind of see it there, there's a mountain range there, okay, 1200 feet high mountain range. All right, now targets over here somewhere. So we did have the waypoint over here in the mission editor. I've actually moved it to the south so it doesn't have to fly because it would have hit the mountains. Okay, so I did look at that later. So I've put the waypoint down here somewhere. Okay, waypoint's down there, and it's going to cruise in on the other side of the mountain range. So it'll have a, a clearer picture. doesn't have to jump over the top. All right, you can see the, uh, you can see the mountains there. Okay, 1,200 feet. That would have been an issue for the missile to come in over the top. And our target, if you remember, we put him right here. So another cool little trick. You zoom in on the mouse with the mouse wheel to the area you're looking at. Left click on the F10 map, and then press left control F11. There is our target. Looking at the goods. All right, so you can see there's a couple of uh, hills here, which the missile definitely would have uh, struggled with. So we'll just park it up here so we can see the missile come in. And we'll go back. So we're at 46 point, well, 45 miles now from target. We go back to the F10 map. You can see our missile is currently right here, cruising in. It's about to start making its uh, speed up time. Left control Zulu on the keyboard. Should hit waypoint two very soon. It's going to start turning right. There we go. So it's hit the steer point. Now it's turning to the right. And it's going to start heading towards the uh, the coordinates that we gave it for its target. All right, so we've got 80 seconds till it turns itself on. So I'll see you guys when it's a little bit closer. All right, guys, so we're at uh, 10 seconds till the seeker turns on. We it should be about 15 nautical mile on here. This display it should coincide about the same. So 15 nautical mile. Seeker head is on. There we go. We've got a different picture there. It looks a lot cleaner. And again, you can switch between aft antenna and normal antenna. So as you can see, our missile is cruising down now. Descending down for its terminal phase of the attack. So this is where, again, the mountains would have been an issue. So you can see how low it is here. So it skims the, uh, skims the floor. So it would have crashed into those hills coming in from the other side. So that's why it's important to have a look at the actual lay of the land and try and get your missile coming in on a nice flat piece. All right, so she's doing a bit of a lob here. And we should start seeing. So let's go field of view. There is our target. So different. We can press and hold the TDC to press and then adjust our crosshairs so that it's looking at. So you can see it freezes the image. A little bit different to the slam but it's looking right there she's coming in so let's go to our other view f11 we should see this thing coming in from somewhere the hell is it where the bloody hell are you There 
it is. Boom. Slam. Attack. Done. Target destroyed. And that's it, guys. That is how you do a slam ER and a slam attack. So the target of opportunity and pre plan setup is the exact same for the slam and the slam ER. The only difference between the two is the slam ER. You can assign a steer point or multiple steer points for your slam to fly until it gets to the target area. Okay, the slam does not, it just flies in on pretty much a straight course. The slam ER is a little bit more advanced and you can give it waypoints, steer points to fly in similar to the harpoon. All right, guys, I hope that helped. I hope you uh, learned something from the video. If you did, make sure you go ahead and like the video. And if you have got any questions, queries, or comments, throw them in the, uh, the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you all as quick as I can. And even if you just want to say good day, any comments in the, uh, the videos, definitely bump it up in the YouTube algorithms. All right, so uh, like it, bump it up, share it with your friends, comment on it. And yeah, help help a brother out to get this uh, get the channel a little bit more exposed on the YouTube. We're growing nice and steadily. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. Speaking of the subscribers, if you haven't subscribed, if you would uh, do me a solid and hit the big old red subscribe button, and uh, only if you like the channel, of course. And if you want to get notified when a video goes live, uh, make sure you click the little bell icon and select all notifications. And that way, when a new video drops from myself, you will get a notification from YouTube saying that there is a new video from K for you to watch. Lovely. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from it and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.